The last time you guys saw Martin, the Subaru from the Grand Tour, we were fixing him up, making him nice to be road legal again. And in today's video, we're going to be completely stripping him down and taking the engine out because Richard has given me a mission to make Martin, in his words, an absolute animal. So let's get that engine out and have a go. I've brought the car to Pole Position UK, which is one of the top places in the country for Subaru work, with the workshop currently chock a block with high power builds. And these guys have history with Richard's car already. Sha, you play a fundamental part in this car's history. Tell us why your company name is on the reg and how this car ended up on the Grand Tour. So we've been importing cars uh, for some time now and uh, we were approached by Amazon to supply a car to them. Uh, they give us a very brief overview of what they needed. And mm -hmm. the only thing we'd got in stock at the time was this car, um, being the V Limited. Okay. The deal was done, they sort of bought the car. And um, that's why our name's on there, because we had to register it for the first time in the UK as, as a business. Um, and you seem to kind of collect these, because there's, there's another V Limited just around the corner. There is, yeah. So uh, I'm very fond of them. We had a few at one time. They've become quite popular now. Yeah and people have realised what they are. So uh, it's getting a bit more difficult to actually get your hands on them. Okay, so the Grand Tour bought this car for their special, then what? So we uh, basically, we, we prep the car, we give it to them, and as you know, Richard fell in love with it. Richard fancied um, it. And kept it, and I can't blame him. It's cool to know that it's kind of come full circle now, we've brought it back here. So what's the process of getting this engine out then? We want big power, so we need to get it out. What's the process? So the process is uh, remove everything from around the engine, uh, remove the radiator, disconnect the water system, disconnect the electrical system, um, fuel system, and then once we can actually see and get the engine unbolted from the gearbox, we'll lift it out and Create into out. the engine room. Okay, let's crack on. Just as we found with our Japanese XKR, everything flew off Martin nice and easy, allowing the engine to lift out no bother at all. These Japanese cars really do put my beloved old British snotters to shame in that department. With Martin's flat four now on an engine stand, the next step was to buzz off all the ancillary bits and any piping to get it down to a bare long block. So off came the turbo, the intake manifold, then the exhaust manifold, and finally the timing cover. We're about halfway through stripping this engine now, but Sha, there was a job you wanted to do before we continue. What is that? So yeah, the next stage uh, is to remove the timing belt. Uh, okay. To do that, we always put the engine into time mm -hmm. um, for two reasons. We can check to make sure it was working okay to begin with and um, that there was no problems we need to be aware of. And secondly, it puts the engine into a safe position where we can continue then to work with uh, both all areas of the engine, camshafts, um, pistons, whatever, uh, there's no risk of uh, damaging components against each other. Okay, so we're going to manually crank the engine we and we're looking to match up the markers? Yeah, the, uh, we, we're going to turn the engine into a position where uh, all the timing marks line up with the uh, marks on the engine itself. Okay. So this is going clockwise. Which is always good practice. Yeah. And so we've got our ones and our twos. Correct. Oh, you can really feel the, the compression, compression in the engine. Okay, and for okay. you, close up there. Is that? Yeah. So I've got you, one and one, two and two. You've got this mark. To right, the, one and one, and the same on that side? Correct. So that's it? You're perfect. Nice. Yeah, and we're happy that the engine was in time to, to begin with, which 
We knew it was, but so, it's good practice. So now those pistons are kind of in the middle of their travel. They is are. that correct? Yeah. Okay, nice. What now? What's the next stage? So the next stage is, let's get this belt off. Okay. Uh, we're confident that we're not going to cause any damage. Okay. So uh, next stage is, we want to release the tension and remove the belt completely off the, off the engine. Okay. With the timing belt removed, some last few pipes are stripped so we can move on to removing the cam covers. Out came the cams and my personal favourite job, extracting the cam followers, followed by the heads so that Martin's engine was now down to a bare short block. With the pistons freed from the block, it was time to crack this EJ20 wide open. The time has come. I'm not seeing a chisel or a sledgehammer. What's, yeah. what's the process of so splitting So it's just a little trick we've, we've sort of used over the years. Um, we found this about the most effective way to separate without damaging the mating faces. Okay. So what you need to do is reverse the uh, pry bars against each other in, in, in an area on the block to push them apart without Oh, okay. to get proper like leverage on yeah them. yeah okay so where am i putting them so we need to put one in here and one there so literally like that so they're working against each other yeah and if you okay. grab them in the middle give them a squeeze yeah good squeeze okay so we've separated well done um then we'll do the same t trick here just on the back so we'll get the two, yeah, the two balls thing. in there there's dowels inside, uh, so they grab. Okay. Yeah, you can be stubborn. Oh, oh nearly. <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. Let's see. There we go. Oh, that's it. There it is. This. Yeah. Excellent. That's so satisfying. Look at that crank. You must love your job. So I do like my job. This is fun. Oh my God. That's one of the most satisfying things I've ever done. That is Richard Hammond's Subaru Impreza block. Right, now some CSI. Does the engine look good to you? Is so, it a healthy one? So the engine's been running very well. Um, when we had it on its side earlier on, I had a good look um, mm -hmm. inside the bores and, and the top of the pistons, and it's been running very, very well. So it's been running on the right quality fuel. It's, yeah. um, it's obviously oil's in good condition, although it looks dirty. That's what it's supposed to look like. So if this was another customer, you'd be more than happy to start making power mods to this block? So yeah, whatever the plan would be now to sit down with the customer, uh, I'd be telling him that his engine was in great condition and we've had no... Uh, hidden upsets along the way. Perfect. That's what we want to hear. The internet will tell you that the Subaru Flat 4 is an unreliable block. Why is that the case? Is it the case? So, I've heard that also. Um, sometimes it's through poor maintenance. Sometimes um, you've got a weak area. Sometimes it's been driven wrong. Um, yep. My opinion is that they're with the right maintenance schedule, and the right quality of oils and and um, you know the right people doing the work on it, these things last an awful long time. Okay. That said, um, there is that many of them that's been built since sort of ninety two. There's going to be a larger number of failures. All the forums say cylinder three. What's the situation there? Yeah, so cylinder three historically was the one that sat next to the turbo okay. and got excessive heat from the turbo. Um, we don't, we build that many. We don't actually see that pattern ourselves. Cylinder four is uh, a little bit more problem on the 2.5, but the two litre uh, was strong. This semi-closed deck unit, it was strong at the box and uh, and it's clearly been 
um, looked after in terms of servicing and, and maintenance. Okay, so that's something else I want to chat about. I've seen on the internet there's open, semi-closed and closed engines. Mm -hmm. What are those? So basically, it's the design of uh, the, 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 the case half. So this, for instance, is a semi-closed deck block. Okay. Uh, very strong out the box. Is that a V limited thing or? So it's not a V limited thing only. It's a um, it's something synonymous with the new aging process. So from two thousand one STI onwards, okay. this was used. This this technique of this extra support. WRXs and earlier cars didn't have this, and they was classed as an open deck. Okay. And then the Subaru uh, built themselves a closed deck version of this engine. And uh, in latter years, people like myself, we we insert closed deck. Uh, pieces to because make they're closer. stronger they're yeah, yeah fundamentally yeah. stronger engines yeah and also people say if you add power to these engines the heads basically separate themselves from the block Absolutely. how does that happen so it's cylinder pressure so when you're actually putting more fuel more air in there to create more power mm -hmm. you are putting 10 times more pressure and that in turn at high rpms can lift the heads Okay. So uh, what we do then is we up upgrade the bolt, the clamping forces, uh, and we've got a couple of options for that. Um, we can increase the size of the bolts. We can increase the, the tensile strength of the bolts. We can do quite a bit. Okay, so that's us done for today, really. I'm really happy with the progress. The engine is all separated out and it looks really, really cool. So tomorrow is going to be what, some cleaning and some looking at some nice performance parts to go on. That's it. right, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for today. I love when my hands look like this after a day of work. Um, and you've got the best job in the world. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Join us back at pole position the next day. We've got some engine parts cleaning next door. Sha, we've got some incredibly good looking parts in front of us. How are we gonna create 500 plus horsepower in that Subaru through there? So we're just gonna keep things simple. We're gonna go back to basics and we're gonna make the engine efficient. This is what this is gonna do. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna focus on is we're gonna get the actual process of the engine to work really well. We're gonna get the gases in really quickly and we're going to get the gases out really quickly. Hence, we've got uprated equal length twin scroll uh, headers and up pipe. We're going to uprate the turbo. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that, really. We're going to introduce some larger injectors. We're going to put some more fuel. We're going to put some more air, <laughs> and we're going to make some more power. Well, it's just, I guess, an engine is just an air pump with it some fuel happening, yes. right? So yes. we're just going to maximize yeah, we all We just that. want to make it happen quicker, more efficiently. These headers look amazing. So if I, if I bring over the unit that's come off the car, this horrible, rusty piece of crap, these are gonna look amazing underneath. So they look amazing, and uh, there's some more improvements we can make to these. We, we can coat them and we can control the temperature of them because they're uncoated at the moment. So they look amazing, but that's yep. not what it's about. It's the function, it's about controlling temperatures, it's about getting the hot gases to travel faster. Okay, so that's how to increase the power, and then here we've got how we're gonna kind of Def, almost defend against that power and make the make the engine reliable. What what's going on here? Yeah, so uh, when we actually start building the engine, we will introduce some forged, much stronger, much better, much much nicer looking yep. pistons. We're also going to introduce some more strength to uh, the connecting rods, which obviously is how we transfer the power. Mm -hmm. We can do all this to a standard engine, but it won't work. It'll okay. it'll break fast. Okay, so the engine's gonna breathe better, it's gonna be much stronger, the injectors will mean more fuel. What sort of number do you reckon, what would you estimate we're gonna get from this package on your dyno next door? 500 is okay. uh, where I'm confident. On the dot, 500. Zero, zero. Minimum. Minimum, okay, I'm good with that. I mean, Richard, we've, we've chatted about this before, Richard has asked for 600. But you said, you know, drivability, reliability, and money-wise, it doesn't make too much sense. It makes sense, to go sense that really, for a road car. Um, what's the word I use? I can't use the real word I normally use. Use the uh, real word. Uh, it's dick swinging. Yep, fine. Um, real world, from 350 onwards, you've got a serious car sure. in Subaru terms. Well, serious. that's it. I've I've driven that car on the way up here, and 
the map, you did the map for the Grand Tour for that car, and it was, what, around 350? Yeah, 350, 360. And that car on British country roads feels rapid. So I can't quite believe Richard wants another 150-plus horsepower. Um, He's obviously experienced in high-power cars, sure. so for him, I, I, I kind of get it. Okay. For most folk, we don't get that privilege. Yeah. Well, we'll see. He'll almost certainly take this package up to the lakes and we'll see if he can go. It'd be with serious. It'd be serious. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I guess next thing is take those nice, new, fresh, clean parts out of the washer. remember Torque GT had their Subaru project car, their P1 project, and this is the pole position car. Sha, this is, well, is this your development car? Is that fair to say? It's fell into that category. Um, it was a personal car of mine mm -hmm. from a, a very long time ago, and we just try things on yeah. it, and now it's become the development car. Okay, so I can already see some green. Can we take a peek under of course, here? Yeah. What is happening under here? <laughs> okay, um, if I was to look at that and you were to tell me that created a thousand horsepower, I think I'd believe you. Um, what, what's happening under here? What is all of this? The simple version is, I like Ford Focus Ultimate Green. That's why it looks okay. like a million pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, it's one yeah. of my favourite colours. Mm -hmm. So I painted that colour. We've gone to the top of the power scale. We've come down. We've broken it so many times. We're at the point now where... Everything that's important about a quick car is what this car is now. Okay. It's reliable, it's fast, it works. So looking at the list here, you've got 2.35, so has that been stroked even further than Richard's engine's going to be? Yeah. Or is, yes. that, or is that some bore as well, or how, how does that work out? Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a genuine Subaru block, mm -hmm. um, which originally started life as a 2.2. Okay. It was a closed deck block from the factory, so it was good. They are they're quite rare. They're available, um, but they're quite rare. And it's quite rare to find one that's actually true, as in the original manufacturing process, as in true. We then use that block once we've done the checks to install and machine out, much like we're doing Richards. Mm -hmm. uh, so where we're taking Richards from 2 litres to 2.1, we take this one from 2.2 to 2.35. Okay. Uh, and use the same method of uh, increasing the stroke using the crank and the, the piston combination. That then gives us a, a rock solid base. Um, then we can start breaking it and understanding what works with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not all about power. It's about finding how to use that engine reliably. It, you know, to finish first, first you've got to finish. Sure, sure. So what, what would you say, I, I know that you've been very coy about how much power this engine makes, what would you say is that perfect number? Does it start with a five? I can speak personally, uh -huh. my number doesn't start with a five. Okay. Lots of people's does and it depends on driving style, what you're using it for, drag strip, sprint. You're endurance. saying that as if it starts with less than a five? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, okay fair enough. So uh, we're, we're unsure what it is, genuinely. I've got my own dyno, mm -hmm. but I quite like the fact that uh, it's rapid and it's got mystery. That's the top and bottom, really. Will Richard's car be anywhere near this in terms of outright road speed? Yes. Okay. The answer is yes, outright road speed. And you're saying this is, this is a supercar beater right now? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Okay, Martin's going to be a pretty serious piece of kit by the time we're finished then. Yeah, there's lots of factors to uh, consider with... That, that answer, but yes. Okay, well, thank you for showing us your car. We are now gonna hit the road, and while we're away, um, there's gonna be a whole load of processes happening. So yeah. what's happening while we're away from here? So whilst you're um, doing your thing, I'll be doing mine, and that includes now cleaning, 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 mm -hmm. then machining, then measuring, checking, then setting up all the parts, checking all those, just basically preparing 
for assembly. Yeah. We will have some machining done on the actual block offs to enable them to be 2.1. 2.1, yeah. We will then strip the heads completely uh, from where they are now. We've cleaned them. Then we'll strip them. We'll replace uh, valve stem seals. We'll reseat the valves. We'll check everything. We'll make sure everything's straight. This is all the boring stuff. Once we've done that, we'll then start looking at uh, any contamination within any of the inlet components. We'll look at what's worn out, what needs to be replaced, what's economical. All this goes on and uh, when you come back, this will all be done and we'll then start the fun bit. Okay, so yeah, when we come back, the Lego set will be going back together. Okay, well I guess we'll see you in a couple of weeks. What's really cool about today's video is that we have a new sponsor on the channel, Zircotech, and now I'm taking these parts down to their HQ in the Mondeo. you guys will know what Zircotech is all about, but if you don't, they make ceramic coatings and heat shielding for car parts that get hot. We've got the turbo, the exhaust manifold, the uppipe and downpipe from the Subaru here today, and they're going to get the full Zircotech treatment. The roll call of road cars you may have seen Zircotech coatings on is quite ridiculous. Murcielago SV, CCX, Valkyrie, Zonda R, Reventon, and in the very near future, Martin. The exhaust bits are getting Zircotech's Thermal Hold High Performance Coating. This stuff was first used in the world of racing, but is now flourishing as a must-have for performance road cars. The parts are taken through to a grip blaster to be roughed up and made ready to receive the coating. So what does it do? Well the coating is suitable for applications up to 1400 degrees centigrade and reduces the exhaust's surface temperature by 33%. That helps bring down the temperature of the engine bay with reductions of over 50 degrees centigrade possible, which in turn can lower intake temperatures and therefore increase engine power. The layer of coating is just not 0.3 millimeters thick, but it provides an incredibly effective thermal barrier, keeping the heat within the exhaust system. By doing that, the exhaust gases stay hotter, meaning they flow through the system much more easily, which increases the efficiency of cylinder scavenging, that being the effectiveness of getting the air out of the cylinder and down through the exhaust system. And that, in turn, helps spool up the turbo. Also, by keeping the heat within the exhaust system, it stops it seeping out and potentially affecting fragile components around it, preventing heat soak. So by using Zircotex coating, you get more reliability and more power. Sounds good to me. Also, Zircotech gives you a choice of colors for your coating. Once all of our exhaust bits are done in here, they will look just like this. This is performance graphite. On that note, the parts are painted in the chosen color before hanging up to bake for a few hours to finish the process. That is all of the exhaust bits now in the mix. So now it's time to head on to the turbo. This is the rear housing of our upgraded unit that should see Martin get over 500 horsepower. And Zircotech are essentially gonna make it a little jacket, something that they call Zircoflex Shield. This other form of heat shielding is used extensively in the top levels of motorsport. F1, WEC, WRC, and can cope with direct contact temperatures of up to 1000 degrees C and can reduce surface temperatures by 85%. This detachable little jacket will further help keep the heat within the exhaust gases, improving emissions and engine performance. The shielding can also be used on exhausts, diesel particulate filters, EGR systems and CATs. And what's even better is that Zircotech are offering drive tribe subscribers 
you guys an exclusive 10% discount on coatings by clicking the link in the description below and using the discount code DRIVETRIBE to take your car's performance to the next level. Martin's engine bay is going to look so cool when our freshly coated parts are in place and they're going to up the performance of the car too. Zirkletech actually produced coatings for Colin McRae's Group A Rally Subaru, so it's safe to say Martin is going to be in very good company. Thank you to Zirkletech for sponsoring today's episode of the Martin Build. In the next episode, the engine will be put back together, put back in the car, and then our freshly Zirkletech parts will be installed too. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Drive.